Last time we were in here, we are looking at functions similar to this. So, we have to first decide which graph is the correct graph of this function. Which one do you think is the correct graph of the function a, b, or c of 24x minus x squared? A. Way to go, Carson Schneider. It is a. Now you can see why it's A, because all three of them are like that. All right, we have to compute the LRAM, okay? The left Riemann sum, basically, is what I go by. The left Riemann sum is where the left side of the, tri the, left side of the rectangle hits the graph, okay? So if you go with this one, the left side of the triangle here hits zero, so there's no or rough side of the rectangle hits there, so there's no rectangle. Here, the left side of the rectangle hits. Left side of the rectangle hits. Left side of the rectangle hits. So this would be the left ram, okay? How do we calculate the left ram there? All right, so it's an interval of 24 with how many, how many, set, how many rectangles? I think there's four. One, two, three, four, right? So how wide is each rectangle? Six wide. <coughs> so the width will be six. So for this one, the first triangle or first rectangle is zero, a width of zero or a height of zero and a width of six. The second rectangle is a width of six. How do we find the height of that? Plug six into this function. So you take 24 times six minus six squared which equals 24 times six uh, gives me a four and a two, 144 minus 36, which is 108 times six. The third rectangle, you put what in? 12, so it's 24 times 12 minus 12 squared. 24 times 12 is like 288 minus 144 is 144 times 6. The fourth rectangle, you put what in? 18. Maybe 18. 24 times 18 is... Four and thirty-two, right? Minus eighteen squared is uh, I don't know. Help me out. What's eighteen squared? A couple of you could get out your calculators and follow along with this. Three twenty-four, which is one hundred and eight times six. So you have one hundred and eight times six plus. 144 times 6 plus 108 times 6. What do you get for your LRAM? <coughs> 2160. 2160. Let's figure out the RAM. So, it's the right side which is this one. And Dylan Riedel just said, it should be the exact same. Which it is. It is the exact same. So that's 2160. So what's the average? 2160. Okay. All right. Now, more exact ways of doing this. Um, is using integrals okay and we'll find we'll work with integrals a lot we don't actually hit integrals till like december of next year in 
AP Kelp. And we're hitting them in the second section here because this is just a little gloss over of calculus. Okay. But what's the graph <coughs> of the line y equals 2? Because this is the line y equals 2 here. What's the graph of that look like? It's a horizontal line to above the axis, right? And we're going from 2 to 5. What's the area under the curve from 2 to 5? And this is y equals 2. Well, this is a rectangle with a height of 2 and a width of 3. So its answer is 6. Easy peasy lemon squeezy, right? Right, Kara, since you're staring at your screen so much, are you even paying any bit of attention to this? You're just nodding, so I guess. All right. What's this graph equal? Y equals 0.8x. What does that look like? Well, let me do this. Let me add a zero in there behind it. What's a slope? 0.8, what's a wire? It's up. <coughs> Zero. So it kind of goes like this. And we're going from 4 to 8. We're finding this area under here. What shape is that? What shape is that thing? It's a trapezoid because it has two sides that are parallel to each other and two non-parallel sides. How do you find the area of a trapezoid? Well, it's one half the height times base one plus base two. The height is the distance between the two parallel lines. How far is it between the two parallel lines? Four. So it's one half of four times base one plus base two. If we put a four into this function, What's point A to 4? And if we put an 8 into this function, what's point 8 times point 8? Tell point 8 times 8. 6.4. So if we add them up, they get 9.6. So half of 4 is 2. 2 times 9.6 is 19.2. That's the area under the curve. Okay. X plus 9. X plus 9 has a slope of what? Y equals X plus 9. 1 and a Y intercept of what? So it kind of goes like this, right? And we're going from negative 7 to 9. Okay, and it's a trapezoid. How far is it from negative 7 to 9? Area is 1 half the height, which is 16, times base 1 plus base 2. Base two. If we put negative 7 in here, what do we get? Negative 7 plus 9 is 2. What's 9 plus 9? Those are the two heights <coughs> of these two lines, which are the lengths of the two bases. So half of 16 is 8, 2 plus 18 is 20, so we get 160, okay? Just graphs. So for this one, 2x plus 2, what's the slope? 2, what's the y-intercept? So it kind of looks like this. Isn't it so good that you actually know how to graph that makes this so much easier? How far is it between the two... Parallel lines, 5. What's the height of the first line? We stick a 2 in there. 6. What's the height of the second line if we stick 2 and 7 in there? 16. So 6 plus 16 is 22. Half of that is 11 times 5 is 55. Area under the curve. Okay? Now, this last one. Um, suppose a drop ball dropped from a tower is dropped from a tower and its velocity after t seconds 
is always going to be 32 T feet per second. How far does the ball drop fall during the first three seconds? And the answer is not you just multiply it by three. You have a graph with a slope of, oops, I did that wrong. Graph with a slope of 32. Okay, this is 32t. Okay, y equals 32t. Okay, how far does the ball travel during the first three seconds? Well, it travels from the integral from 0 to 3 of 32t. Okay, so we're going from 0 to 3. Okay, so it's a triangle now, right? Instead of a trapezoid. The area of a triangle is one-half the base times the height. What's the base length? Three. What's the height of this if this is three and this is 32 T? 32 times three is? 96. If we do the math, we get 144. Area under the curve. Okay? So today we're doing area under curves.